All right, here we go, finally, the Explore 79. Let's go. Here we are, the new Explore Life 79 series dual cab. This has been a long time coming. I, I can't even tell you the dramas we've had, we've had with COVID, with um, companies not having supply, then just the car being locked in Melbourne, us being in Queensland. I've driven this thing personally back from Melbourne twice. It's been down there three times. We've had a few dramas, but we got there in the end. And look, to say I am bloody ecstatic is the biggest of understatements. This right here uh, has been a bit of a dream of mine since I started Explore. Um, look, credit, credit where credit's due. I got a photo on my phone back from 2015, I think it is. Justin from Patriot, the black truck. Um, there's been so many other inspirational 79 builds and you know, that's when I started this. I, I wanted this. I had this vision in my head. Um, to be honest, it's almost bang on what I was thinking back in the day. It really hasn't changed much. And uh, look, thanks to you, your guys' support, um, and everyone getting around the series, you guys buying our merch, we've been able to continue to create free content for you guys. And uh, now the 76 is gonna get retired. The, the, the big girl, it's done me well, but um, we are embarking, myself and Jess, on the big lap of Australia next year, and I needed something with a little bit more space um, that can take a better GVM, and then look, I wanted something that can tow just a little bit more for when we come back with some big boats and bits and pieces. So I'm not gonna dribble on too much. Let's get stuck into it. We're gonna start, uh, we'll work our way underneath the truck like we normally do. We'll talk about the front, uh, what's under the bonnet. We'll go inside the cab and then last but not least, my favorite, because let's be honest, there's not too many different things you can do on a 79 series, but the canopy is something super personal, set up exactly how we want. So stay tuned, we'll run through that. But um, let's get into it, let's go. All right, let's get into it. We're gonna talk about the full underneath. This is where uh, the whole vehicle's been built around the upgraded uh, chassis. Now look, I have done build videos as we're going, so if you want more detail, we run through everything um, in one of our previous videos. So if, if you're just seeing us for the first time, or it's the first time you've watched, you can go back, there's about three or four uh, build videos going into the specifics. Uh, so. Let's run through it anyway, we'll go through it again. So up front, we got the BFG uh, KM3s, absolutely love them, had them on the 76, can't fault them. They're a 35, 12 and a half R17. I've uh, teamed them up with the uh, Race Wheels Australia. They got the Method um, 312s. Now, because the GVM upgrade on this, these are a 1650 kilo rated rim. So very heavy duty. There's only a few that you can sort of align with a 4495 GVM upgrade. This is one of them. Uh, look, a lot of people are starting to run them. They are one of the best looking rims around in my opinion. So absolutely love them. Wheels and tires. Uh, we got six, two on the back. Then we go into suspension. Now, what we've done is a full 4495 GVM upgrade. So we've cut the old chassis, welded a whole new chassis onto the rear. We've extended the wheelbase by 300 millimeters. We got rid of the leaves um, and we've gone with coils with an airbag inside of it. And then we've also gone a whole new diff housing, uh, which fixes the wheel track. And look, upgraded radius arms, upgraded shocks. This thing is uh, all running on the Kings, of course. Absolutely love the Kings. Had them on the 76 as well. So it's four inches of lift. 35 inch tires, all fully engineered, fully legal. 4495 GVM and I can tow four ton. So um, absolutely massive upgrade on the initial Land Cruiser. So we got the Kings at the rear, um, all J-Max radius arms. The whole kit was done and engineered by J-Max. Go check out that video once again for a full run through. You can see us cutting, and chopping it, and I go into massive detail. As we work through to the back, like I said, uh, the, the leaves are gone, coils are in. Of course, we got the airbags in there. They have been phenomenal already. Um, wouldn't have it any other way. 
We're gonna get some in-car controls. That's one of the last sort of things that we haven't had time to do, but in-car controls to adjust that airbag when I'm just running the canopy. And then of course, we are towing next year. So when we're towing, we'll be able to put a little bit more PSI in those bags. Everything's gonna sit absolutely dead level. Three and a half stainless exhaust, um, stainless steel exhaust. We'll sneak around the back. This is the uh, rear of the new chassis, when we welded in the new chassis. Big J-Max solid. Uh, now look, it gives you a toe point at the back, and of course, it allows us to have a rear winch, which is pretty bloody cool. So we've got the rear winch cradle here. We're running the Bush Ranger. We've got the Revo, 12,500 pound. Uh, she's an absolute stonker. Because the truck is gonna be sitting that little bit heavier, I'll be honest, it's probably gonna come in at about four ton, fully loaded, all the gear, me and Jess. That's what I'm aiming for. So I should still have about 500 up me sleeve. Brown Davis tanks. Now this is bloody impressive. So at the rear here, normally you got your standard tanks, about 130 liters. We've ripped that out and we've gone for the Brown Davis um, long range tank. It is 185 liters, very bloody impressive. Now, if that wasn't enough, which look, it can be, um, but we're gonna do some long touring next year. There's a few spots that I experienced last year up in the Northern Territory, which I kinda wish I didn't stop at. I wish I had been had enough fuel to keep going. But um, underneath, running perfectly along the chassis rail, in between the chassis and the tail shaft here, we've got uh, two more tanks. It's another 110 liters um, between the two of them. That gives us a grand total of 295 liters of diesel. Absolutely massive. Now, some of you guys are gonna say it's too much. It's a lot of extra weight. The cool thing is both these tanks have individual fillers and I can switch from either tank. So if we're gonna be pretty heavily loaded and I know I'm gonna do a little bit of, um, you know, that more harder extreme four wheel driving, I'll probably run the, tuck, the back tank almost dry. I'll throw 110 liters in the front, it puts all my weight forward of that, um, for to that rear axle and stops that little bit of back heaviness. Uh, not that there's a lot with the new chassis, but it just gives me the ability, if I break one tank, I can isolate it. Um, you know, good luck breaking one, but you never know. It's all these things. If you pick up bad fuel, isolate the last one you filled up. Um, drain points on the bottom. The Brown Davis tanks uh, are gonna be absolutely unreal for these big days on the road where I just wanna haul ass. And, and uh, if, you, if anyone's been touring, you know exactly what I mean. So we are loaded for diesel. Uh, let's keep working our way back to the front. Another thing to point out while we're under here is the clutch. So of course, as soon as you're chasing any more power out of the 70s, you've got to upgrade that clutch. Now I've gone with the Safari Armax clutch. It's a true 1100 Newton meter, heavy duty clutch. Uh, this thing drives like a dream. It does have a really nice pedal feel. So far, absolutely stoked. The front, uh, that's basically underneath covered. Now to kick it off at the front, of course, uh, the old important bash plate, we got the Brown Davis bash plate on there. Four bolts, factory mounts, simple as you like. Um, if, you don't have a, if you don't have any front underbody protection, get around uh, some sort. Now, ARB bar work. Once again, we did a full install video on this, but I've gone with the Deluxe. It's the 63 mil tube bar. This is their new matte black. And now, look, we were toying up. Should we go the matte black? Should we say with the satin, uh, like in the... Um, like on the 76, but in my opinion, the matte black looks absolutely awesome. If you've got a powder coated canopy in that black, it, it is more of a matte finish and it has come up an absolute treat. To match the rear winch, we got the Bush Ranger, uh, the Revo. I, I called it 12 and a half thousand before. It's actually 12,000 pound winch, not 12 and a half thousand. So we got one of them up the front as well. All wireless controllers. Here comes the rain, let's keep going anyway. Um, then we got the lights. Of course, you've got to have those uh, LED lights. We've gone the Solus. Now, I've been running the intensities um, for absolutely years. These are still an intensity, but a Solus. Now, they do have a couple of pretty cool functions. We'll show you them inside the car on the links, but we've got the uh, Solus lights up front. We've got the 6.6 .6 DBI uh, whip up the front here. The nice big hua, and then tucked in behind the seat. I've got the smaller one, 2.1. GME, it's the XRS unit. Once again, I've got them on all my cars. GME, it was a no-brainer. It was always going on. So we'll work our way around the side now. Scrub bars, personal opinion, I wouldn't have a truck without them. Um, you know, some people like the cleaner look, but for the type of four-wheel driving we do, um, it's gonna protect. Everything, that's what they're there for. Of course, they wrap down into a side step, protects all your under sills. Uh, we got a little bit fancy and just uh, 
powder coated the top of these steps black just to keep that color coordination going um, but you know it makes it easy to jump up on top of the car I think side steps and scrub rails are just super practical. Uh, I know you can get those electric ones and all that crap, but not quite for me. Um, now we got the Safari snorkel, we got the big Safari Armax, um, getting all that air into the engine. I've run different types of snorkels over the year. Basically hated them. I went straight back to the, the, uh, the old school Safari Ramhead Armax on the 76, and I wasn't going to do anything different on the 79. Absolutely stoked with it. We'll get into performance a little bit. Uh, later when we jump under the bonnet. So Safari, um, MSA towing mirrors on the side as we work our way down the track. We did a video on these as well. At first, if you've never seen the MSA mirrors, they're gonna look a little bit weird to you, trust me. Uh, it took me just a little bit to get used to them, but in my opinion, they just sit in so nice, clean, um, and I'm absolutely love them now. I, I wouldn't go back to anything else, but they got a couple of different functions, slide out, slide out again of course for towing that caravan next year these things were an absolute must uh, up on top arb have just released a brand new roof rack it is called their base rack i was looking at a couple of different racks um, and i didn't even know they did them and as soon as i seen the new rack i loved it i'll be honest the selling feature was they do a beautiful slimline light bar that tucks underneath and mounts up that was the selling point for me i was like done dusted um, and it's got a bit of anti-glare built into it as well so the way this this light bar is shaped is the leds come up from the bottom and then it actually throws it out in a bit of an arc so um, i haven't even had a chance to use it can't wait to see how well that goes so stay tuned for a bit of a review now of course max tracks i've got the max tracks extremes up here um, i carry them on every single truck that's just an absolute must I will have eight. I'm gonna take eight because we got the van with us on the next trip. So um, I'll end up having eight Max Tracks up on top. We're getting down to the important end of town, but let's jump under the bonnet real quick, have a bit of a look, and then we'll get inside. All right, let's jump under here, the big bad 4.5, uh, the VDJ. Okay, so airbox has been, uh, it's still a standard airbox, but they modify it to suit the R Max. I, personally, I think these seal pretty well. Um, I love the, the standard, the, the standard uh, paper filters for the amount of touring and dust we get. I don't want to deal with the, um, the ones where you've got to bloody spray them and carry on and undo 50,000 bolts. So I'm a big fan of, of keeping the uh, factory airbox. Um, let's come across. We are running a dual battery. I kept it super simple underneath here. I got a Red Arc um, BCDC. We got the uh, BCDC, just the 25 under the bonnet which links up to an AGM battery. Now all this is really doing is running my CF11, my little interior fridge uh, and then I've got a couple of other outlets and little USB things. So that was more than enough to be honest. Um, I threw it in when I was in a bit of a rush. I'm probably going to pull that out, chuck a lithium set up in there but of course we'll keep the Red Arc BCD. See, nice and simple. I haven't gone overboard with this. I've sort of started at the bottom and I'm going to work up with more and more power if I need it, depending on um, how heavy the truck gets and what it's like towing this new van. So, of course, I've gone again. I couldn't fault it. The Armax ECU from Safari, we've put it in. We had it in the 76. I had a lot of extra accessories in the 76. Bigger turbos, intercoolers, full custom tune. At the moment, we're just running the uh, Safari Armax ECU. They've got an upgrade coming very shortly, which is why I'm not gonna run you through too much um, in the way of numbers and figures. I'll do a full separate video based around performance, what sort of numbers we got out of this thing, the drivability, so stay tuned for that. Okay, so there's a couple of other cool Safari products that are coming to market very, very shortly. We have done the full R-Max package, um, so I got them on just a little bit early for this new build. I'll run through them in detail when we do a full performance uh, segment, but oil to air separator. Um, I'll go through all the specifics later on, and then tucked down underneath here is a secondary fuel filter. You should see the size of this thing. It is absolutely massive. I'll run through the specifics with that a little bit later on as well. You will be blown away just how much restriction some of the other aftermarket secondary filters give you. That's why this thing is sized correctly to maintain that fuel flow, fuel flow I'll get there, through uh, India motor. Um, underneath the bonnet, 
To go with the um, J-Max upgraded kit, we do have the hydraulic brake booster here. Um, they didn't just throw a big lift and wheels on it. Watch the video, you'll understand. I'd go through everything in detail, but we got the upgraded uh, brake booster here. Mate, that's probably just about it. It is pretty simple under here. I'm trying to keep everything as simple uh, and not as not not too overdone. I don't want to chase huge horsepower. I'm after reliability. I'm after safety. Um, and the Armax never let us down on the last truck. And look, when you're out in the middle of nowhere, trust me, you don't you don't want to be able to spin wheels and carry on. So let's uh, let's jump inside the cab and we'll run you through the cockpit. We've gone we've gone to town in there. Nothing too flash, but um, geez, it makes a big difference. As you can see, it doesn't really look anything like a 70 series anymore, but you will notice it looks identical to the 76 if you've been following along. I mean, there is only one or two small changes inside here to the 76. Now, there's a pretty good reason for that. It's because everything was tried, tested. Look, I did, I did just about all of Australia in that 76 series. Everything from, the only thing I missed was sort of Perth to Broome. Everything else we gave a fair nudge. So. I was very happy with the way the 76 was. We just ran out of room. So that's why you'll see this truck basically runs all the products that the 76 did. So, so much so that I actually took the steering wheel straight out of the 76 and put it in the 79. Um, it is a PVS wheel. It's a huge improvement. It changes the whole look and feel of inside a 70. Um, if you can get your hands on an aftermarket wheel, I absolutely love it. It links up with my... Um, brand new head deck which was from EC off-road it allows me to adjust all the volumes I got my cruise control tucked down in here um, and it, it just sort of finishes the inside off now over to my right uh, what looks like a phone is actually the ARB link system if you don't want that is uh, I did do an in-depth video in the uh, ARB build but it's basically a switching panel I love it it's simple it's clean it means I don't have gauges and switches and shit everywhere so right now, what I can see is my main battery and auxiliary battery. Um, so it gives me my voltage. I will link the rear battery. I haven't had time to do that yet. Gives me speed. Uh, the inclometer tells you all that sort of gear. I'll run through it pretty quick. Time, date, uh, nothing too important there. I told you I'd tell you a pretty cool function about the Solus. Um, so from in here, I can turn the spotties on, but they're actually full adjustable as well. So I can go from 25% uh, up to... 50, 75, and 100%. Now, when you're driving on those highways just out of the main cities and there's lots of signs and reflective, the 70s don't have great lights. Even the high beams are pretty average. So to just chuck an extra 25% on, and then as you get further out of town, you can crank them right up. But trust me, that, that was a cool feature. I used it coming back from Melbourne. I actually, I absolutely loved it. Now, um, I also can control my lockers from here. So I've got the ARB air locker in the rear and my compressor. I've got a couple of configurations to go on this. Uh, it goes in next week, I was a little bit slow, but basically I can control my airbags from here as well. So I can have three preset heights, which is very bloody cool. And then of course, if I wanna pump up my tires, I can set my pressure, clip my air hose on off the dual compressor that you'll see in the canopy shortly, and uh, it pumps it up just like at the servo. Link system, check it out, big fan. Just under the link system here as well, uh, nice handy location, I've got the Red Arc Tow Pro. For anyone that's towing, uh, it's the Tow Pro Elite. You, you gotta have your electric brakes once you get over a certain weight. Um, they are the best in the game, um, and that's in a nice little easy spot so I can adjust it on the run. Just underneath the Tow Pro, I've got the Safari Armax control pad so I can run through my five different adjustments. So you've got comfort mode, sports mode, you've got your towing, traction assist, and then back to standard. So nice and simple right next to the wheel. Um, I do flick between them more than you'd imagine. Uh, if I need that little bit of extra power every now and again, I'll throw it into sports mode and um, off-road with the van, I'll probably predominantly use towing. When I get into those real hairy sections, chuck it into that traction assist, and it just gives me a little bit more control over the throttle. I'll run through more of that to do with the performance as well, but everything is within arm's reach. Super simple, super clean, happy days. Of course, the whole center console has been changed out. You get one cup holder and one shitty plastic box. We all know they're rubbish. I've gone with the cruiser consoles, um, console <laughs> it's uh it's clean it's neat it's tough it's a full aluminium top extra cup holders storage uh usb two two usbs and a sig socket and then i've paired it up 
with the uh, Dometic fridge. So you can either have a fridge console or you can go just your standard console with a foam lid. I absolutely love having the fridge console. Cold water on the road, cannot beat it. And if I wanna just load it up with shit, it's as good as a console anyway. When we get to the doors, got the one stone armrests. If you own a 70 series, Look, I think they're about 350 bucks. Do yourself a favor, go, go grab them. They're absolutely unreal. And then if I open the door, I got the full door pods down here with the speakers. So you pick up another cup holder, your map pocket. Uh, once again, we did a full interior video if you want to check it out in detail. Um, looking up top, we've got the cruiser consoles, roof console. Super clean, super neat. I got the... Uh, XRS, the GME XRS unit tucked up here, magnetic mount. Um, I had it in the exact same place in the 76. I had the same roof console in the 76. If it wasn't up there, I'd be grabbing up here. I'm just used to it now and I absolutely love it having it up there in the middle of the car because it also means your Navi can grab it, get on it as well. Whereas sometimes if it's tucked down here, it makes it hard for the navigator to get on and have a little bit of a chat. Um, I got the Explore dash bag. There's some more of them coming soon. Stay tuned for that. Other than that, um, MSA seat covers. These are the flash ones too. They come with the lumbar support. So I haven't opted for the Recaros yet. Let me know your thoughts, Recaros, Stratos. Who, who just loves the 70 seats? Personally, I had them in the 76, didn't have too many issues. And with just a little bit of lumbar support in the MSA seat covers, I'm actually stoked. I don't think I'm going to upgrade the seats. We'll see how we go. I've got the seat covers in the rear as well. I'm keeping all the seats in the rear of this truck um, because I'm going to have a few people come out and visit when we're on the road next year, which is going to be going to be a bit exciting. Four people in the car. We've got the rooftop tent, the van I can sleep for, take for. It's going to be good fun. I'm looking forward to next year. Um, inside, I think that's, that's just about it. Under the seat, we've got some slide-out drawers. Nice and neat. Um, when you're on the road, when you're sort of living on the road, you just want everything to have a home. And um, that's what all this extra storage allows me to do. The dash bag, sneak some stuff underneath the seat, uh, the console. So it should keep everything super clean. One thing I didn't point out is I've got the Brown Davis secondary fuel tank uh, gauge down here. And I can switch from my um, auxiliary and main. It replaces the ashtray I don't, you know i don't think anyone uses ashtrays anymore so that's a very neat little inclusion one last thing and then i'm done gear stick extension basically mike shock shop sells these i think they're worth bugger all screw that on it lifts it up an extra two inches and it just seems to be at the exact right height when you're driving unless you're a big gangly bloke with long arms then you might not have to worry about it but i think that's just about it for in here let's go and check out the canopy I will just show you in the back real quickly. These are the uh, the rear door pods with the six inch focal speakers. You get the extra pocket. Now, these are called fire strikers. If you guys been following me for a while, you'll understand. But um, these are basically a, a simple, small, uh, compact fire extinguisher. I keep one in the back seat and I keep one uh, underneath my front seat as well. So easy to grab. I've made this mistake before. I may have had a small fire once before. <laughs> so if you don't have a fire extinguisher in your car, go check out one of our other YouTube videos, but do yourself a favor. Go and, I think you can get these from ARB. Um, even if you've just got one of the bigger ones at home, chuck a fire extinguisher in your car, but these are super compact. That is important. Um, that's about it. All right, let's go. I'm very bloody excited to show this canopy off. Um, so it is a Boss aluminium canopy. I've known Dave for the last four or five years. I always carried on about how I want to do, uh, do something cool with him over the years. Of course, having a 76, it was bloody useless. But as soon as I got this on, um, honestly, I did go through, shit, 10 or more trade companies. Obviously, there's a a bucket load out there but the sort of 10 industry leaders maybe and then that drops down to about three or four and i sort of went through everyone with a fine tooth comb and um when i sat down with dave he he has the ability to sort of make everything very modular you'll know what i mean in a second and i just wanted something that was going to suit my needs the touring needs to take the gear i want um, and he aligns very well with the Red Arc products that I wanted to put in this truck as well. So everything sort of just fell into place. You'll know what I mean. I'm going to start off on this side. You've got to wait and see the other side, but the other side's where the kitchen is. The other side's where we sort of went a little bit overboard, but 
it's going to be sick. So let's get stuck into it. The tray itself, it is uh, the very first one he's done on the 79. It is the premium tray. Now, for you guys that have got 79s, keep in mind, this one is specific to the 4495. Um, the only difference is on the standard 79s is you'll be a little bit shorter and you won't have this front box. But up top, we got um, the camp lights, the side lights, they pivot around uh, up and down and they tuck in there very nicely with a switch on the side. Super bright, absolutely unreal for finding those, um, those little side camps. Now look, then behind that, tucked in, and this is the reason for going to the full sheet metal headboard. Tucked in behind here, we've got a massive 85 litre stainless uh, water tank. So I've got 85 litres of fresh water in the headboard. I'll show you all the filler and, and bits and pieces on the other side. And that actually links up to another 70 litre tank underneath uh, in front of the trundle drawer, which we'll show you, which gives me a combined total of 155 litres of fresh water, which is a bloody game changer, let me tell you. We sat on Stratty for nine days. I have taken this car out for a bit of a maiden voyage. Uh, I kept it pretty low key on social, but um, we've used it to come back every afternoon. Little quick fresh water shower is absolutely amazing. So the top tank is a gravity feed. I've just got a bloody uh, little isolation valve on the other side. It feeds into the bottom tank and I've got a pump back here. Um, so I've got pressurized water. Uh, we'll show you all that in a minute. Uh, what else we got? This is the uh, the lockable filler cap here for my actual for my Brown Davis. Super simple. That's for the auxiliary tank on the back. When we get there, I'll show you. We've got the um, we've got the rear tank filler. Now into the into the front compartment. So this actually has a full ARB uh, premium recovery kit. I got my. Um, tree trunk protector, my snatch strap, I got my winch dampener, I got the poly block, two D shackles and a set of gloves, all in this front little drawer, which is bloody impressive. The biggest thing with Dave's new premium tray is there is absolutely zero wasted space. Nice big flared mud guards uh, to cover the rear tires. So the car is sort of like half fitted out. Stay tuned, I'm gonna do a full video on uh, how we pack for our trip, but this has got a few little bits and pieces in it from the last Stratty trip. I got the Interflate from Max Tracks. I got the winch dampener in there. I just keep straps, ratchet straps, and then uh, I got a 12 volt jump pack from ARB, but plenty of storage. Actually, I've got a few more things tucked in here I didn't even know about. I got a soldering kit. I got my little recovery block. I got shit in here I didn't even know about. And then I got some uh, zip ties tucked in here. So this one will sort of be a little bit of, um, a, little bit of a tool drawer few bits and pieces, just things I want to grab nice and easy. Now, one thing I want to point out is that the canopy and the rear drawers are fully central locked. This is bloody handy, let me tell you. All my mates say they leave them unlocked or they got to go around and lock them all uh, with a key. It is a key lockable option or simply push the button, canopy's locked, rear drawers are locked. Just so good for when, when we're going to be on the road traveling. Unlock it, away you go. Let's get into it, eh? So here we go. This is what we're calling the uh, electronic side. It's gonna be all the big bulky items. The kitchen side is the other side. And this is sort of for all of my other bits and pieces. I'll, I'll figure out what's gonna go in all these drawers. I actually don't know what to do with all this space, which is great. I really wanna run this car as light as I possibly can uh, for, for when we go around Australia. So this is, in my opinion, one of the best things about um, Boss Aluminium's canopy, even the tray setups. If you, if you are just starting out and you want quality gear and you wanna work your way up, with these other trays and all these canopies, everything's modular. So you could buy one of these trays, then you could add the rear drawer, then the front drawer, the mud guards. You can sort of build it as you go and it's the same thing with the canopy. In here, everything is modular, everything can move around and change. Now we specifically designed this one to suit uh, sort of what I was chasing. He's got a few different packages you can pick and choose from, but um, we've gone the full whack when it comes to the electronics. We'll run through that in a second. But this whole section here, for example, you got six screws, six screws up top, and I can remove this whole drawer and shelf. Um, if I wanna lift that shelf up higher or down lower, depending on what I'm trying to fit in here, I can. So I've already taken a shelf out from the rear that we had tucked in here, so I can fit those nice tall items. I've got a nice deep storage locker here. I keep my ladder 
for the rooftop tent. I've got a folding table. We got the barbecue um, up top on this shelf. I've got the Red Arc solar blanket for when I'll need extra solar. Um, I got a sneaky airbag man compressor tucked up the top there. Um, if I want to plug it into the boat and pump up the rear boat tires or anything like that. The draw systems, everything Dave does just makes sense. Some people, you got the double latches and it makes it a little bit hard to open. Simply pull down on the wire, slide out. Nice, massive, big draw. Super deep, all carpeted up, finished absolutely beautifully. Uh, slide back in, closed it nice and simple. Over this side is, is, is where um, all of my camera gear is gonna go. So I'll have multiple camera bags. I'll have all my drone and bits and pieces tucked in away here. A lot of gear will be up top charging. Um, so I can simply slide out the, the table underneath. I can get my drone and bits and pieces out. So we'll get into this side, the power hub. Um, we've gone to town. It's it's all Red Arc gear. We've got we've actually got a Boss aluminium battery in this one. He, he does his own specifically to suit this setup. It is a whopping 240 amp hour lithium battery. That's tucked in behind this drawer, which is why this drawer is slightly uh, shorter in length than this one. Now, we've gone with the Red Vision. We've got the full TVMS system um, linked up with a 2000 watt Red Arc inverter um, and then outlets absolutely everywhere. So come around this side and I'll run you, in, run you through it. Here it is. Let's throw some light on the situation. We got the Red Arc uh, Red Vision system. It is the TVMS. Uh, so this is the Red Vision control panel. Can turn the light on up here. I've got nice strip lighting inside the canopy, on the doors, all fully dimmable, um, depending how much light you want. And then of course, I can flick it to orange, all dimmable. Uh, for those of you guys that don't know, the orange light uh, the bugs aren't attracted to it, and I gave it a fair run at Stratty, and let me tell you, very impressed. I'll be using the orange light. I've never had it before, but I was uh, absolutely stoked. So we'll go back to white so you guys can see. So from here, I can basically control uh, a lot of the components throughout the canopy. I do have this app on my phone as well, so I pull the app up, uh, and I can control the whole canopy. Sometimes I leave the lights and bits and pieces turned on. When I'm in bed at night time, jump on the app, turn them off. But from here... I can turn my water pump on, which charges up the water pump. You haven't seen that yet. We'll show you that in a minute. I can turn all my rear lights on. Um, I can turn my inverter on. And then I can also turn on my oven. You're gonna have to wait and see that on the other side. But um, once I crank all that up, I can flick over and I can see exactly what the whole system's doing. So the main reason for the, uh, the Red Vision is basically it's just a full management system. So right now with everything wound on, I can see I'm using 6.8 amps. Um, I can see how much is coming out. I can see how much is coming in. I do have a massive amount of solar. We'll show you that very shortly when we get up on top. At the moment, it is literally raining and full cloud coverage. So I don't have anything coming in on the solar. But when the solar is in some nice sunlight, I can see how much solar is coming in, how much is going out. I'll do a full video on the 12 volt um, so I can go in depth. Otherwise I could sit here and talk about this for about an hour. With the way we set up canopies these days, we use more power than we ever have before when it comes to camping. Uh, when you run the amount of appliances that I've got pumped into this thing, I need that extra power, which is why we've got that huge battery. Uh, it's no good having all that battery storage if you can't jam the power into it. So that's why we got the big solar up on top when we're sitting still, but when we're driving, I wanted to put a little bit more power in. So the Manager 30 will do 30 amps per hour into the battery system running off the alternator. Now, look, that's probably not quite enough with um, the amount of battery storage I've got here. So we actually grabbed one of the BCDC uh, 50. It's the BCDC 1250D is what it's called. I'm just reading off the sticker, but it's the 50 amp hour BCDC charger. So we've managed to link the 30 and the 50, which gives me a whopping 80 amp hours of charge straight out of the alternator into this system into the uh into the big 240 amp hour battery so a good three hours of driving and this system will be topped right back up pretty bloody impressive um i don't know too many people that may have done this um a lot of people just run the management systems but let me tell you it charges that bloody quickly um having that 80 amps pump in there it's bloody unreal i will be putting a bigger alternator in Probably the 200, uh, 
200 amp hour fully sealed. Um, I got to I got to decide on something next week. But um, I'm not a big 12 volt guy. I don't know the ins and outs, but I will do a full video on this system. But I thought that was pretty cool to point out. Then we got outlets absolutely everywhere. I got a couple of USBs here, SIG, SIGs. So there's another two back there. I got six USBs, three cigarette plugs, and then off my 240 outlet plug here when the inverter's on, I've run a separate little power pack to plug in here for all my drones and bits and pieces. It's a little bit of overkill, but for the amount of camera gear we're gonna be using next year, um, I'm gonna need it. Then there's not a lot else going on on this side of the canopy. So let's jump over, let's check out the kitchen. All right, let's go. This is the side I'm excited to show you off. We spent plenty of time designing this. There's a couple of firsts that Dave's never done before from Boss, um, and I'm absolutely stoked. Keep in mind, I came from uh, 76 where we had three drawers and one 50 litre slide out fridge with a table underneath it. That was it, that was the setup. This is just a whole nother world for me. All right, I'll stop dribbling. Let's go. All right, here she is. Have a bloody go at this. There's gonna be a couple of things that catch your eye straight away. We have gone a little bit fancy, but at the same time, remember, this is my home. I don't own a home. We've got a van and we've got a car, and this is what we're gonna be living out of. So I'll run you through it, but um, straight up, we got the Dometic, we got the massive 110 litre um, upright fridge. Now, I've always had chest freezers. A couple of my mates have got these upright fridges, and I just absolutely love them. Simple and easy. Um, I do have a few bits and pieces in here, don't worry about that. But up top, I've got a nice little freezer. I've got a couple of apple pies. I've got a couple of party pies. A little bit of ice cream tucked up in there. Everything's super accessible with these upright fridges. You find with your chest freezers, you pull everything out to grab the snags from down the bottom. So I absolutely love that. Tucked away on the left hand side here, we've got a couple of handy outlets. I've got an iPhone cord sitting here. Um, so if I want to charge anything in this little side, we can. I've got a chopping board tucked in here. Basically, um, one, of my, one of my followers, I, I, I'm very sorry I've forgotten her name, gave me this a couple years ago and it just so happened to be the exact perfect spot. So shout out to you. Righto, here we go. I gave Dave a bit of a, a challenge and I said, I want to fit a travel buddy and I just wanted a spot for my coffee machine. Now, a lot of you are going to start giving me a fair bit of shit here in the comments, so go nuts. But uh, I love my morning coffees and I wanted a slide out pantry. So Boss Aluminium has gone to town and he's come up with this. It's his own design and it's now going to be available in the Boss Aluminium canopy. So if you've got a canopy, you can, uh, you can already order one of these, modular one, and you can chuck it in. Get around this thing, would you? So, nice little table drops down at the front. This is actually extremely handy for everything. And then we got the coffee machine tucked in here. When I said I wanted a coffee machine, I just wanted a bit of a spot for it. Dave has gone above and beyond. Have a look at this. We got little pod holders up the top. Um, yeah, I know, we're getting a little bit fancy now, but it's a, it's a full fancy ass one. We got the milk frother. I uh, have given it a hiding over at Stratty. I didn't know how to use it. It's fancier than the one I've got at home, but Basically, the coffee machine's tucked in there. We slide it out and uh, it reveals the full pantry. So I've seen someone do this. I think a couple of people have done it, to be honest. Uh, it's not reinventing the wheel, but just the way he's configured all this is absolutely awesome. It just makes it so nice and easy to get into all your bits and pieces. Got it loaded up here with cans, easy access to top up the water. And then I can just fill it with everything we need while we're on the road. We got the little travel buddy. If you guys have never seen these, basically it's a 12 volt oven. Um, absolutely unreal. So you chuck your party pies in um, and then when you pull up at lunch, pull them out, hot, ready to go. Party pies is the basic option. There's a few people that go to town on these things. You can put the aluminium trays in there, little, uh, little roll porks, pull up at lunch, pulled pork, so crank it up to 200, chuck it in while you're driving, it's best for battery usage. So look, that's a brand new setup by Dave. Hats off to him, he's absolutely killed that. Now when we come over to here, um, I've got a nice slide out table once again, and then a massive pull out drawer. So this is all my kitchen side. So I've got the fridge, I've got um, all my cooking pots and pans, my alfoil, all those sorts of things gets tucked away in here. So it gives me a nice little prepping bench here. Everything's at a pretty reasonable height as well. 
um, and when I got those internal controls on the bags, when we pull up to camp, I'll actually be able to drop all the PSI out of the bags, which will probably lower this another inch. So perfect height. This is pretty bloody cool. This is from the Bush Company. This was uh, when we were up there getting the rooftop tent and awning fitted. I seen this and I actually used to have another shelf in here, which once again is the best thing about the Boss aluminium gear is everything's modular. So you might have a cool setup and then you want to change it down the track. It's simple and easy to do. So four bolts. I pulled out the shelf I had in here and this um, full canvas cutlery kit fit absolutely perfect. So this thing will sit here nice and zipped up. The best thing I like about this is when we're traveling in the van, predominantly we're gonna be living out of the van. When we disconnect, I'll be able to pull this forward, unzip it, and um, you get all your coffee cups, all glass as well, good quality gear, tucked in up on top here. You got your full glasses at the bottom, um, and then all around the outside, you've got your knives, your forks, your spoons, you got all your bowls, small plates are tucked in down the bottom, and your big plates are tucked in up on top here. So everything's got a everything's got a spot, everything's got a home, nothing bangs around and rattles, and it's all where you want it when you need it. Little chopping board tucked down in the side, and then I just keep little bits and tongs and bits and pieces. I'll neaten it all up, but um, this is just something we trialed at Stratty. Absolutely loved it. Lighting, once again, inside on the canopy, all dimmable again. Um, I've tried to keep it pretty simple, pretty clean. I don't want to have lots of shit stacked up and it be a mess. For, for living on the road next year, I want everything to have a home, which is why we've got good quality storage, plenty of fridge space, um, the pantry, and then we've got a massive drawer around the back, and that's where I actually put my cooker most of the time when I'm prepping here. So we'll go have a quick look at that. I'm getting carried away. I'll show you these drawers before we get to the back. Here's the gravity fed tap, um, nice and simple. I can put a little hose on that, but to be honest, that's perfect for cups, pots and pans. And then he's got a simple uh, water gauge here. So all it is is a clear bit of pipe from top to bottom of the tank and allows you to see that water level. The, the water level for the tank underneath is all in the red vision and it tells me exactly how much is left. So the top tank's sort of your basic, gravity fed, simple, and the bottom one's the more complicated with the pump and uh, the, the, the uh, filler band on the red vision. I get another light tucked in, um, flush mounted on the headboard here as well. And we'll get into the drawers. So this front drawer, I've actually basically got a few sand pegs. I got um, three different first aid kits and I've got a few ropes and bits and pieces. So once again, just that cheap storage stuff. I don't have to worry about it because this front box isn't fully lockable, but um, lots of storage. Go around to the back box here. This is where we've tucked away the dual ARB compressor, absolute monster. And the way he's done this box is absolutely zero wasted space. So they've sort of notched it around the exhaust so it sneaks through there. Nice little shelf up on top, little picnic blanket tucked in here, um, all carpeted. The, the, the quality, the way it's finished off is just absolutely amazing. Um, I've got a couple of extra plumbed fittings to go, so I'll have an air outlet here and on the back of the truck. But um, you can see as we go around the thought and just the, the practicality and the quality of Boss Aluminium, it's, it's bloody second to none. When I went down and I went through um, and seen all the different canopy setups and layouts there, it was a bit of a no-brainer. Um, simple locks, uh, there's a few different ones on the market. These things, obviously all the door seals are um, fully waterproof, dustproof. We went through a heap of water. As you can see, we were sand everywhere over on Stratty for nine days. There's no sand inside here, um, except for what we've <laughs> chucked in there with that picnic blanket. Let's go check out the rear of this thing. First off, it just looks absolutely bloody gorgeous in my opinion. What a good looking rear end. Um, so we got the two 35 inch tires on the back here and it is an extremely simple system uh, to get them up there. I have had to put these tires up there. So it's a matter of unscrewing that uh, you've got a pin in behind there. This rod comes out, tires come off quite nice and easy. All fully lockable, of course. Uh, in the middle, we've got a nice ladder, which comes in extremely handy for the rooftop tent. So we've got a couple of good quality latches. The ladder comes down, giving us good access, either up onto the roof or like myself, I got the rooftop tent up there, which makes it super easy. Um, we'll leave that for the moment. 
I just want to show you this rear trundle draw. Have a go at the size of this thing. Keep in mind, we do have a 70 litre water tank in front of this. So once again, nice and simple. We got a huge, big chopping board here. It slides back and forth, so we have easy access. And then it's fully removable as well. So, you know, we've looked, I've looked at different ones. Some people have gas struts on them and bits and pieces, but for me, I found this is simple and easy. So I normally have the food prep over here. I have the gas barbecue here. The, the big 270 awning comes around, so I've got full protection from the, from the elements. Um, simple, one hinge. It's all the little things. The number plate's tucked up here nicely. Your, your number plate light comes down onto there. I've got a massive, big LED reverse light when I go into reverse, which comes in super handy. Nice lights. Uh, and then here's my other Brown Davis filler, which is actually at the back of the car, which has been super easy uh, to fill up. So that's the rear entry. So tucked away nice and neat up out of the way where it can't get broken is uh, the water pump that comes off of that tank. Now, you get a little uh, hose outlet here. Um, I've gone and put in something a little bit extra just uh, for my easy use, which, which to be honest came in that bloody handy. So that's my pressurized pump. I've just thrown a stainless hose on it. I've run it across to the other side. Come have a look. So keeping with simple and easy, uh, I may change this setup. I threw it on just for strategy, but basically I can pull out my stainless hose here. When the water pump's turned on, I got uh, plenty of water. Now I've got that pressure wound down as much as I can so I don't use too much water. Stops Jess from uh, smashing through that 70 liters too quick. But that's just a handy little attachment that I've chucked in there, which just sits in that little hole back there. Um, I'm sure Boss has got a, a cleaner solution, but having that pressurized water right here in the kitchen side has been absolutely unreal. Another couple of things that I've just picked up on the back here, I do have two more of those side lights, which pivot, uh, spin around. Uh, great for finding camp when you're setting up all those sorts of things. And then of course, when you're cooking, they throw bucket loads of light at night time. Look, we've got to be getting close to the end of this tray and canopy. I know I've been dribbling for a while, but we spent a lot of time, a lot of energy in this. Uh, let me go. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you do something different. Um, this is sort of designed specifically for my touring setup next year and what I want to do on the road. So um, we'll see how it goes. And the best thing is if I want to chop and change, if I want more room on that side, I may pull a whole drawer and um, shelving section out. So I've just got a huge, big open area. I just love that it's modular because as you grow and expand with camping, you're always going to change your setup. So since it is bloody raining, we, we should have done this from the start. Let's put the, the awning out. Now on the 76, I went with the uh, 270 XT awning. This is the 270 XT Max. You'll understand in a minute. Why do I bring the rain everywhere I go with me? So this flicks around here. This is going to be a quick tutorial. But um, I've just put a carabiner on the end here. Run around, I put a sneaky little eyelet on this side. Then this side here, slides out just like the standard 270. Round the back. Another simple eyelet. Tension that up, fully freestanding, have a go. Uh, the amount of shade and protection from the rain we have with the new 270 Max. Now look, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys. I love my uh, 270 XT. And when Dean told me he had a bigger one coming, I was a bit iffy. I really like the simplicity of um, just going whoop, round nice and quick and you're done. So the extra step sounds lazy, but I wasn't sure if I was gonna really want it, if I needed it. But I tell you what, especially right now when it's raining, the normal XT comes across on an angle something like this. So this is a really good feature for anyone that's got the um, canopies. Because the poles come out straight, if you've got a canopy door that opens up, it goes up under the awning. Um, it doesn't hit any of the poles, plenty of clearance. And mate, absolutely massive. Here's another awesome feature about the Max is I can still access my doors while it's raining without getting wet. Um, so look, I wasn't sure if this was gonna be a permanent feature. We gave it a run over at Stratty for New Year's. It basically pissed rain for <laughs> four days straight. 
Best thing ever. I'm absolutely stoked. Once again, super strong, all aircraft grade aluminium. Um, I've been running these Bush Company awnings for the last three years now, and um, I didn't think I would want to run anything else, but the Max is absolutely mint for what I do anyway. So stoked. Um, I'll just pull this awning back a little bit. We'll pop the rooftop tent up and uh, I'll run you through that real quick. We've just pulled that awning around so I can jump up and, and, and talk to you about the rooftop tent. I'm running the Alpha again, the Bush Company Alpha. I had it on the 76. Look, I absolutely love it. I spent a fair bit of time with Dean um, when, we, when he went from the Black Series into this. Gave him my few little bits and pieces of input um, and I've been running it for the last, I think, 12 months on the 76. Absolutely love it. There was no other tent on the market that even come close. So we've gone with the Bush Company again. Um, I have got a video on YouTube if you want all the specific details. But um, obviously, I've got the rear ladder access. I will use this a fair bit because, um, you know, you don't have the awning out all the time. When it is raining and I want the awning out because you're going to go, how do you get up if you want the awning? You always ask that, everyone. <laughs> um, I have got the, I've got the other ladder, which is a telescopic ladder that comes out and simply bolts onto this side so I can have that side uh, entry. So I've got two ladders, but um, look, it is makes it just a little bit easier. So straight up on the back of the ladder, nice sturdy ladder. This thing's an absolute beast. Um, up on top here, while we're up here, we might as well run through this before we pop it up. Okay, so I've gone to town with the power. Up here we've got two Red Arc 150 watt solar panels. So I've got a combined total of 300 watts of power, which means when I'm sitting on those remote beaches over in WA and SA, um, we can sit there for pretty much as long as we want. The amount of amperage that these things put in I haven't tested it yet, so I'm not going to throw figures around, but stay tuned when I do a full 12 volt video because I want to run you through that whole system and I want to know how much I can get out of these panels. Um, so we'll go through that in detail, but absolutely bucket loads of uh, solar up on top. I've got two roof rack rails here. All I need to do is put a couple of the Bush Company uh, feed extensions underneath here to lift these roof racks up. That way I can chuck surfboards and bits and pieces um, on top of the solar panels, pull the surfboards off when we get to the beach, full solar. So that's one of the best things about the Bush Company is you can see all the way around the outside here, you've got the nice excursion rails, which means he's got all his own brackets, all his own handles, his own ladder mounts, roof racks, he's got max tracks holders for the side, shovels, high lift jacks, he's got it all. So let's pop this bad boy up in the rain. Up she goes, nice and easy. Nice little bungee strap that comes around the outside here. So then we've got the massive rain fly. If you've never seen the Alpha, like I said, go check out the full video, but I'll just give you guys a quick little look, show you how easy it is. One over this side, tuck that one in there. The other spring pole goes on this side. Get that doggy up here. Straight in the hole there. Nice, easy access with the ladder. Another thing I like about it is we put the rooftop tent just forward. So I've still got the platform to stand on the back here. Absolutely massive, huge rain fly. And you can see why these big rain flies are so important right now when it's raining. Keeps all the internal canvas nice and dry. I won't go into too much detail with the Alpha because I've done it all before, but absolutely love these tents. How easy is that for a touring setup? Let's jump down and put the awning out so you can see the whole setup all in one. While we are on the side here, how good does the new wrap look? <laughs> I went down and see my mate Joel from 5.3 Designs. He's absolutely nailed it. We took that old school um, design from the 76, changed the words around for the Explore Life. Uh, good job, mate. It looks shit hot. Right over well, there we go. Have a look at it. I can't stop smiling. <laughs> What a bloody epic little setup. Look, I'm over the moon. It's uh, everything that I sort of envisaged, all the little uh, tips and tricks that I've sort of picked up over the years, seeing so many people's different canopies. Um, this is my, hands down, my ultimate tourer. I can't wait to use it next year, and I'm sure I'll probably want to change a few things along the way. But look, guys, let me know if there's anything else that you think I should do. Let me know if there's something that you would have done differently. Um, but all in all, Ah, uh, 
absolutely shit eating grin. I want to say just a massive thank you uh, to all of you guys that have followed along. I really do appreciate it. If you are enjoying it, you know, make sure you subscribe. It means a lot to us. Uh, everyone that gets around the merch, um, it's you guys over the last five years since we've sort of been building this brand that has allowed us to be able to build something as incredible as this thing behind me. Uh, to all my sponsors, a lot of help from the sponsors has gone into this truck. That's no secret, guys. Uh, you know who the sponsors are by now. I don't think there's too much left to do. I've got a couple of small little bits and pieces, but we'll run through them um, over the next couple of months. We're gonna run through plenty of things to do with how we're packing for our big lap of Australia. Stay tuned to find out what we're gonna um, tow around Australia. Now look, I didn't build this thing to sit in the shed. It's not a bloody uh, shopping trolley. This thing is gonna do a full lap of Australia. Stay tuned for season four this year. I don't know which way we're gonna know. I don't know where we're bloody gonna go. It's all kicking off with COVID again. But if you guys wanna see this thing in action and the full series four, make sure you subscribe, chuck us a like, turn that bell on so you don't miss any uploads. I can't wait to go and use this thing. We gotta finish this van off if we're gonna get out of here. But uh, until then, guys, make sure you guys get out and enjoy the Explore Life. Thanks very much.